Okay, number two, we're asked to find an explicit solution to the initial value problem given by that. Now, uh, there's, there's a lesson here. There, there's teachable moments that happen in this problem. So I'm going to proceed as I expect most of you would to proceed. Uh, and then at the end we'll come back and we'll learn a valuable lesson. Um, and you can determine what that valuable lesson is. E either I'm a complete jerk or I'm trying to teach you something of, of value. Okay, so I think most students would start this way. Uh, we got ourselves a separable equation. Gonna, oops, we're going to start. I got my dy dx here. And I'm going to separate those variables. And I'm going to uh, integrate both sides. For the 1 over y squared minus 1, I can resolve that into partial fractions. And I can use the cover-up method on this because it's distinct linear factors, so I can use Heaviside's theorem to figure this out. Um, to get the constant a, I look at the singular point here, y equals negative 1 is bad. I cover up the y, I cover this up, plug in y equals negative 1, I'm going to get a is negative 1 half. For b, the term here, y equals 1 is bad. I cover up that factor, I plug 1 in, I get b is 1 half. Or else you go through the normal partial fraction decomposition thing that you know and love. And we end up getting negative one-half over y plus one plus one-half over y minus one for our partial fraction decomposition. Which means at the integral, one over y squared minus one dy is the integral of minus one-half over y plus one plus one-half over y minus one dy. And so I get negative one-half natural log absolute value y plus one plus one-half natural log absolute value y minus one plus a constant from that integration. So, going back to my differential equation, have the left hand side equal to the left hand side that's just another log and so I can get an implicit solution like, like so Okay. Now, uh, as we remarked in class, when you have an initial value problem, when you're and you're asked to find the explicit solution, you can invoke this initial value anytime you need to. All right, or or excuse me, anytime you need to, you can invoke it as as soon as you get an implicit solution to determine what this c is. It makes the constants more manageable as you go through. So, y at three equals one corresponds to the point x equals 3, y equals 1. And so we plug in x equals 3, y equals 1, getting 1 half natural log of 2, excuse me, 4, plus 1 half natural log of 0. That's going to equal natural log of 3 plus c. And we're supposed to use this equation to solve for c. And what's wrong with this equation, folks? This is wrong with that equation. You can't take the natural log of zero. So, what gives? All right, what gives? I mean, is there no solution? I mean, would I give you a problem with no solution? I mean, am I, am I that much of a jerk? Well, hold your thought for just a minute.
This is a first order initial value problem. We have an existence and uniqueness theorem. So let's check that out. Okay, to apply the existence and uniqueness theorem, as we saw in the previous quiz, uh, we, you know, this is written in what I call normal form. If I look at this function and its derivative, and I look at where they're, you know, they're happy in the xy plane. I mean, the only issue I have is when x equals zero. But as long as x isn't zero, I should be able to find a unique solution around any point, including the point here, which is 3, 1. I got a nice open rectangle around there. I should be able to find a solution. Moreover, I should be able to find only one solution. So the answer is what gives? All right, what gives? I'll tell you what gives. What was our what was the first thing we did when we saw this differential equation? We separated the variables. And in order to separate those variables, we divided both sides by the y minus 1. And assuming this, we're assuming um, y can't be 1, y can't be negative 1. But are y equals 1 and y equals negative 1 solutions? Remember, we're thinking of these as functions of x. Are these solutions? Well, heck yeah, they are. Here's the differential equation. If I substitute in y equals f of x equals 1, the derivative of y is 0. y squared minus 1 is 0 over x, which is 0. So that checks. Same thing can be said for y equals g of x equals negative 1. So guess what? There's the solution to our initial value problem. It's y equals 1. The function y equals 1. Here it is. Now, we can't have x equals 0, so y equals 1 is the solution to this differential equation on the interval from 0 to infinity. So what's the lesson there? Well, the theory tells us there's a unique solution. When we were going through the solving process and we divided by y squared minus 1, now you see why it's important and why you always write down, oh, are we excluding any solutions? As soon as you realize y equals 1 is a solution and the existence and uniqueness theorem applies, then y equals 1 is the only solution to this initial value problem. So there's some lessons and morals in there. It's too early on Sunday for me to actually articulate those correctly. I think you get what I'm talking about. But that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 2.